Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. For years now, I have lived on a very small suburban lot in a busy neighborhood. Over that time, I have used a number of wire antennas to be active on HF from my home. The trouble with a small lot is that there really isn't enough room to put up a wire for anything lower in frequency than 40 meters. Even squeezing in a half-wave 66-foot wire can pose issues. Overhead power and telephone lines can get in the way, as can closely spaced trees with low-hanging branches. Getting the antenna up to a decent height can also pose a problem. Ground-mounted verticals may not be suitable in many locations due to their requirement of a bed of buried ground radials. In my own particular situation, the only suitable location I have for a ground-mounted vertical is the back corner of my yard. That location features a chain-link fence and, of course, a right angle formed by the property line. Placing the vertical right next to a metal fence and laying radials in only 90 degrees out of 360 would surely result in a compromised antenna system. While doing some antenna research several years ago, I learned of a product being marketed by a company called Zero Five Antennas. Zero Five specializes in vertical HF antennas. While some of those verticals are the classic style that require ground radials to do their job, there are two that integrate into their design ground radial elements. These antennas do not necessitate the use of buried ground wires. Referred to as ground planes, the two models offered are one for 10 through 40 meters and the other for 10 through 80 meters. I reasoned that the 40 meter antenna could be used in my situation, but would this design actually work? A quick trip over to eHAM Reviews gave me some answers. As of October 2020, there have been a total of 71 reviews and an average rating of 4.9 out of 5. Those are excellent numbers. After carefully reading the reviews, it was apparent that reviewers not only found the antenna met or exceeded their expectations, but in addition all were impressed by the solid construction of the 05 ground plane. After reviewing as much information as I could find, I put the 05 10 through 40 ground plane on my wish list of antennas I wanted to try. Last summer, a local ham posted a 10 to 40 meter ground plane freestanding vertical antenna on an online swap shop. The model he was selling was the one with the unin. I contacted him and we made the transaction. Before I tell you about my installation, let's examine the physical specifications of the 10 through 40 ground plane. According to the 05 website, the antenna is 29 feet tall. There are six ridged aluminum radials, each 100 inches long. The radiator and radials are made from T-832 drawn aircraft aluminum tubing. The CNC machined base tube is made from two and a quarter inch, one quarter wall T6 extruded aluminum tubing. This thing is heavy. The mounting pegs for the radials are TIG welded to ensure a good electrical connection. The base insulator is fully CNC machined black Delrin for excellent insulation and a 3 kilowatt power handling. The unit comes with or without a 5 kilowatt matching transformer and mounting plate with leads. As for frequency range, the 10 through 40 ground plane is usable on 10, 12, 15, 17, 20, 30, and 40 meters. A couple of months after acquiring the 051040, I set about the task of erecting it. I acquired a 10-foot chain-link fence top rail to use as a mast. Since this was to be a temporary installation, I did not set the mast into a concrete base. Rather, I used three stainless steel hose clamps to fasten the mast to a fence post, which was anchored in a concrete base. Since there is a bit of heft to the fence rail and a 20-pound antenna was perched on top, 
I was reluctant to let the fence post take all the weight. Using a hose clamp and stainless steel O-rings, I used three guys to further support the mast. Putting together the 05 ground plane was very easy. All radial and radiator sections overlap each other by three and a half inches. Sections are held in place by hose clamps. It doesn't get much easier than that. Before erecting, I painted most of the antenna a flat black to give it a lower neighborhood profile. Now that the antenna was securely mounted, per the manufacturer's recommendation, I attached 100 feet of LMR 400 coax. I was curious about this length requirement, so I asked Tom of 05 if the feed line radiates. His response was the feed line does not radiate, but is part of the matching. I also inserted into the feed line a high-end company line isolator to help keep the feed line from radiating and my neighbor from getting upset. This is as good a time as any for me to echo what I had read in all those eHam reviews. This antenna is built to commercial standards. It's very solid and I would trust it to withstand very serious weather conditions. Due to its ease of assembly, the 05 ground plane is suitable for situations that call for use in repeated portable deployments. With the installation complete, it was time to test the 05. The SWR was flat without the need for a tuner across the breadth of 40 meters. It tuned up fine on all the higher bands up through 10 meters using my ICOM IC7410's internal tuner. It's important to note that you do need a tuner to operate on all bands other than 40. Now that I knew the SWR was as it should be, I started to make contacts. In the first few weeks I had it up, I operated multiple times on 40 meters to see what results I would get. First up, I had a nice chat with Brian, Kilo Bravo 9, Zulu Papa Kilo on 40 meters. Brian is in Wisconsin and we had a nice sustained chat for almost half an hour. One day on the eCars net when I checked in, the net control operator expressed interest in the 05. He gave me a 59 plus 10 report and asked other stations listening if they would mind giving me a report. Several stations along the U.S. Eastern Seaboard responded, all giving me reports of 58 or higher. That was a very good result for what I had considered to be a compromise antenna for tight spaces. While I noticed in reading the eHAM reviews that some amateurs had been successful in using the 05 ground plane on 80 meters, when I gave it a try, my results were not very good. And that's fine by me, a 05 has made no claims the antenna will perform on 80. For my final test, I wanted to take the antenna to the next level. So I put it on the air during the CQ Worldwide International Single Sideband DX Contest. Here is how the antenna fared. Okay, Whiskey Man, Whiskey Man, is your neighbor, thank you. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Uh, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Okay, Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike, for line number 8. 5904. Thank you. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike, 5904. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. 5904. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mexico. Roger, copy 5904. Thank you and good luck to Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Tango, Whiskey Mike again. 
Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike. Victor Echo 3, Tango, Whiskey Mike, 5915. Roger, 5904. When I first acquired the 051040 ground plane, I was not sure just how well it would work. Now that I've seen it in action, I would not hesitate to recommend it for anyone that does not have the real estate to put up a full half wave wire on 40 up high and in the clear. It's a very capable antenna that is easy to put together and built to last. Well done, 05. That's all for this time. Thank you for watching, and until we meet again, get out of the shack, get outdoors, and get on the air. 73 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.